You're listening to Up an Octave, a podcast by Sonivia, the podcasting agency that believes that women and non-binary people deserve to take up space in the podcasting industry because our thoughts, voices, and stories matter. Here you'll learn how to make dope podcasts that inspire, educate, convert, and most importantly, make your voice shine. I'm your host, Rue Spence, and I'm here to take podcasting up an octave. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Up an Octave. Today, I am coming to you from Colorado. We made it. This is the first episode that I am recording here in our new house. And fun fact, our shipment of all of our belongings got delayed. So we've been sleeping on an air mattress and living out of a suitcase, and it's been a really fun time. That said, I definitely don't have a studio set up right now, and my house is so empty and so echoey that I had to get really creative to record this episode. I'm actually in the closet that will be my daughter's room, and you can see the setup of how I made this work to get this level of audio quality in an empty house on Instagram at Sonivia Studios. So if you're not already following me over there, you're going to want to check that out because it is comically fantastic. (laughs) Anyway, today we are talking about equalizing or EQ and why it is so important for your podcast. If you are doing your own editing, this one is going to be so helpful for you, even if you are someone who doesn't consider themselves super techie and you've been kind of scared of getting in the weeds with editing. EQ is a change that can dramatically enhance your audio. And with a little bit of finessing and playing and tweaking, it really isn't all that tricky. Equalizing helps to balance your voice. It enhances and neutralizes different portions of your audio and your voice to help you sound clear and comfy and fun to listen to. Think of equalizing as the spices that you add to your podcast. Your voice is the recipe, but then the little tweaks and dash of this and touch of that that you add is really what makes it all come together into something beautiful and delicious. Without equalizing, you can have unwanted background sounds and background noise, hissy sibilance and crispy crunchy sounds, blurbly distortion and all that kind of jazz. So let's start with what equalizing is. You've heard this term. You've probably heard it through like a music lens. You might have seen like a, an EQ button in your car stereo or on an old like boombox. So EQ is frequency specific audio control. In the episode all about luffs, we spent some time talking about decibels, which refers to volume. Today, we're going to be talking about hertz, which refers to frequency. It's helpful to think of these two elements on an X and Y axis. For example, this is my normal speaking voice at my normal volume. This is my normal range of hertz and decibels. I can increase the decibels, or I can decrease the decibels. I can increase the frequency. I can decrease the frequency. I can increase the decibels and frequency. I can decrease the decibels and frequency. Or really any combination of those. I'm getting a little silly here. Now that we've got that established and kind of how those two elements work with each other and compare to each other, let's quantify hertz. Most human ears, the human hearing range is from 20 to 20,000 hertz. Outside of that spectrum, we have things like infrasound, which can quite literally make you go mad. Like seriously, sonic weapons are a thing. And infrasound can cause psychosis. Some people even think that that's like why we think a place is haunted. To visualize how all of this comes together, you can open Audacity. I'm going to do my best to explain EQ auditorily on an audio-only podcast, and I'll include some samples to help you hear what this sounds like. But if you have the free time, I think it's worth taking a look at as well. So to do that, we're going to take a sample recording. Just take a couple seconds of you going like, hey, what's up? It's Susie. How you doing? Cool. Snag that little sample recording. And then go to Effect, EQ and Filters, Filter Curve EQ. This is going to bring up a graph-looking little pop-out window where you can get a sense for what I was talking about with kind of the X and Y axis. You can click around to add different points on this line to change the shape of the EQ, the shape of your voice, if that makes sense. 
through the magic of editing, we are going to switch my voice over to how it sounds without any equalizing. You should already be able to hear a difference, especially if you're listening through good headphones. If you're listening through like your car's Bluetooth, you may not get as accurate of a depiction of how this changes. So first up, let's drop the bass. This is the lower section of the range of hearing. And this is going to help to get rid of any mechanical sounds that might be audible from my home studio, i.e. Ollie's closet, or my HVAC, or just other like housey sounds. Those are often kind of a deep bassy rumble, um, especially like this time of year we're dealing with like heaters and that kind of stuff. Even like radiators kind of have like a little hummy sound sometimes. All right. On Audacity or most visual EQs on any DAW, DAW, digital audio workstation, this looks like dragging that left side, so where the smaller number of hertz are down, and making the decibels in that range lower. So low decibels, low hertz. And this is going to silence or make that range just less audible. Where you want that low roll off kind of depends on your voice. I warned you, a lot of EQ is just finessing and playing around to see what you like. Typically, for myself and my clients, I'll roll off somewhere between 60 and 90 hertz, depending on how low or high my speaker's voice is. So time for a fun fact. Voices that we typically consider male live between 85 and 155 hertz. And voices that we typically consider female range from 165 to 255 hertz. That's about an octave higher. You could say it's up an octave, which is where the name of my show comes from. Okay, so this is what it sounds like to roll that off downwards to silence it. You're not necessarily going to hear a whole heck of a lot of difference here, but depending on the house sounds that you're fighting against, it can make a big difference. And this is what it sounds like to bring that low up really, really high, just to give you an idea of what type of sounds live down there. It's not really going to change your voice all that much, but depending on what like other sounds you're fighting, that's where you'll see the change. So play with it, see what works, see what doesn't. I think it's just kind of best practice to roll it off um, and then you don't have to worry about it. All right, through the magic of editing, we are back to being totally unequalized, and now we're going to get to the core of your voice, around 100 to 300 hertz. This little range right here is your voice. Remember how I said no matter what type of voice you have, this is pretty much the sweet spot where all voices live. Raising the decibels, so making this part sound louder, too much here can give you kind of a boomy sound, and lowering it too much, you can get that tin can sound, or it kind of sounds muddy. So find the curve that works well for you. All right, so let's do a little taste test of what going really high on the decibels in this range sounds like. So you can hear kind of how big that sound sounds. You're really boomy. It, it just sounds wonky. So let's get out of that. And now let's get really low on the decibels in this range. I'm having a lot of trouble not changing the pitch of my voice as I'm saying high and low over and over. But this is what it sounds like when you take that range where your voice lives and you really dramatically drop it down. So you're losing a lot of the core of your voice, a lot of the richness, a lot of the nuance of the tone when you get out of that. Oh, all right. Back to the blank canvas. And we're about halfway through and you are doing great. I know that this one is techy and intimidating and maybe doesn't translate super well in audio only, but my hope is that just by breaking this down a little bit, you'll kind of understand how EQ functions and maybe get curious enough to start playing with it for yourself. The next section that we're going to talk about is from about 300 to 650 hertz. And remember that there aren't really any hard and fast rules with EQ, so it's better to kind of like slope things off rather than to have steep cliffs. So don't think that you have to like, oh, I'm at 300 hertz and that's it. I have to jump high or low. We want to think kind of like waves, not cliffs. So 300 to 650 hertz is where things can get boxy or hollow. And these are words that if you're not in like a music recording space may be kind of hard to grasp just hearing them. So let's get to playing with it. We're up high now in this range. We've raised the decibels up kind of on a, on a wavy mountain peak. And when we use words like boxy, this is what that means. You get this almost like echoey sound. 
when you bring this range up. And you can hear that even though I'm recording on my Shure SM7DB. Uh, it's a great mic and it doesn't typically sound like this. So when you bring that range up, it can kind of make you sound like you're like recording into a, a trash like iPhone from like the early 2000s. <laughs> so let's take it to the other extreme and go all the way down. All right. And so here we are when we bring that range all the way down. You get a hollowness. You lose the richness and the dynamism of your voice. To me, when this area is too far down, it almost sounds like Uncanny Valley to me for like listening. Like I know Uncanny Valley is like dolls and stuff. To me, it sounds like Uncanny Valley. It's really uncomfortable to listen to. So let's just flatten that out again and go back to normal. All right. That's good to get out of there. (laughs) So now we're on to about 1,000 to 4,000 hertz. And this area is probably where you're going to want to spend most of your time, especially if your voice is on the higher side of things, because this is where a lot of that nuance lies. This is where we get a lot of like crispy sounds, especially like mouth sounds and vocal fry happen in this range, especially if you're not working with the best tech. If you're working with either not a great microphone or not the right microphone for your space, I'm kind of looking at you, Blue Yeti. Sorry. (laughs) I know a lot of people really love it, and I, I know it's accessible for a lot of people, but augmenting this range can get the best out of your Yeti. So if you really tweak this range and and dial it in to your voice, you can bring out a lot of clarity here. So explore this range, figure out what you like on your voice. As we've been doing, let's play. If we take this range really high, decibel-wise, we get a little sharp and a little abrasive. Laughter can also get really painful when we bring this range too high. We can get kind of shrill and just intense, and it can be a little little grating to listen to. On the other hand, when we drop it really low, we get a little like wampa wampa sounding, and we lose some of that bright clarity that makes listening to you engaging. And that's kind of where we can have listeners fall off. If it doesn't sound compelling, if your voice alone doesn't sound engaging, it can be hard to connect with what you're saying, even if what you're saying is brilliant. All right, flattened out again, and we are on to the last big one for your voice. So this is from like 5,000 to 8,000 hertz, and we are in the sibilant zone. Sibilants, aptly named RRS sounds. They are hissy and they don't sound great on microphones. It's just across the board, not a pleasant sound on mic. Luckily, equalizing can help to make them more palatable. However, this is another range that with great power comes great responsibility. So let's raise the decibels here. She sells seashells by the seashore. Okay, oh, yeah, all done. My apology. Now we've dropped the decibels way down in this region, and I can say sorry for torturing your ears. I didn't want to use any more sibilance, but let's try it again with it being dropped way low. She sells seashells by the seashore. You can hear, though, how dropping this region makes those hissy sounds far more palatable. You can also see how, depending on where your range is, it also drops some of the the richness of your voice. So... Play with this carefully, see what you like, and you'll often find it's not an extreme. You know, you shouldn't have like V points in any direction. All right, we're back to normal, and I just wanted it to be a little more comfortable to hear what I'm talking about. So as we mentioned earlier, you want to think like waves more than up and down, right? Like you don't want V points, you want like a cool little roller coaster slope. So you can bring things up and gently whoosh them down. Anywhere that you have like a really steep drop off, there's a bigger chance that it's going to sound a little bit less refined. All right, we are at the last section, which is 10,000 to 20,000 hertz. There's really nothing vocally going on here. This is kind of the inverse of that very first really bassy section that we were working with. It doesn't have a lot to do with your voice, but it can help you to eliminate background sounds, especially when you're recording over the cloud, like with Zoom or Riverside or Zencaster, a lot of that like internet sound <laughs> kind of is in this higher frequency. So this is when we bring that frequency really high, and this is bringing it really down low. I tend to just roll it off on this direction as well, just out of best practice. So I kind of go like, oop, <laughs> that's me going up 
I don't know why I thought that that sound would be indicative of what I'm talking about. So from bass, we kind of go up, then we'll have some uppy downies, uppy downies in the middle, and then we'll go all the way down. So it kind of looks like an upside down bowl with some squiggles in the middle. Huh. And now we're back to my EQ profile. I recommend playing with it and creating a preset for your voice and for your co-host's voice or whomever you're speaking with. This will also help you to establish an audio signature for your show. Think of it as like your special sauce if we're going back to the spice analogy. Every time people hear your show, they will hear that kind of sound. Think of it like the, the twilight filter, right? that really heavy, like blue, cool filter where you can just see a still without Bella and Edward in it, just trees. And you can be like, oh, that's Twilight. Whereas if we switched and put a really warm filter on an aerial shot of the Pacific Northwest, you'd be like, okay, sure. But because it's got that really harsh blue filter on it, you're like, oh, that's Twilight. So the, the EQ profile that you establish for your voice is kind of your Twilight filter. And, you know, obviously you can go a little too extreme, but (laughs) I don't suggest going full twilight with it. But having something that just sounds like your show really helps to deepen and strengthen your brand. And, you know, as we talk a little bit about branding your podcast, these are things that I think most people aren't considering is that even down to how you equalize is strengthening and establishing the brand that you curate for your podcast. I also recommend tweaking or revisiting your EQ profile anytime that you change gear or change spaces. So I haven't really gotten too in the weeds with my EQ panel yet because this isn't going to be my forever studio. I'm only recording this episode in here, knock on wood, and then I'll have a better studio set up in our new house. And at that point, I'll tweak it and play with it to get it to sound great in my new space with my new house, new HVAC system, new echoey walls, whatever the case may be. So have fun playing with these settings and get creative with them. It's really easy to overdo it with EQ, but it can be a lot of fun to kind of lean into that when your show calls for it. For example, Audacity even has frequency presets like this telephone preset that could be a lot of fun if you're doing an audio drama or something where it'd be kind of cool to have like a dramatic reenactment where it's like ring, ring. And, you know, you have like the little phone sound and then, you know, the static of picking up and now like, oh, hey, I'm on the phone. Cool. Hang up. And then you could go back to a different EQ profile. Like there's a lot of ways that you can have fun with it. So so just lean in. Let it be a little silly. Remember, podcasting is not heart surgery. Nobody dies if your EQ is a little wonky. This is your podcast after all. Have fun and make your own sound. Hi. I'm interrupting the show to tell you about something special, a chance for us to connect one-on-one. Whether you're thinking about starting a podcast and aren't quite sure where to begin, or maybe you've got a show already, but you're not sure how to grow, I want to let you know about my free consultations. Yep, that's right. Absolutely free. No strings attached, no pressure, just a chance to chat with your fairy pod mother, that's me, about turning your podcast dreams into reality. You'll walk away from our conversation with actionable steps to take, whether or not we end up working together. Think of it as a gift to you and your show as a thank you for listening to the podcast. If listening to me here isn't enough and you're ready to take the next step, let's chat. Find the link to book in the show notes. Now back to the good stuff. All right, so today's question comes from Shay and Jody over at Rainy Day Rabbit Holes. You know, your girl loves her some mystery, some curiosity, some Bigfoot. So go check them out. They ask, hey, Rue, we'd like to start pitching other podcasts on having us as guests. However, we don't have much of an audience at the present. How do we pitch ourselves as guests with low downloads and a tiny audience? So this is a fantastic question because the dance of being a guest or being a host is such an intricate one. There are really kind of two types of guests, an expert or a connector. So the expert is maybe some stodgy professor who comes on to tell you about the science of blah, 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 blah. So they may not have any kind of social media following or, you know, probably no one even knows their name. They may know their research, but they're not likely to know their name. But these people are crazy smart have information that is mind-boggling and so 
important and nourishing to your audience that you don't even really care if they're not going to promote on social media just because of the significance of what they have to share. And then there's connectors. And that's where you're like, OMG, somehow I got to sit down with this really high profile guest who then pushes me out on their social media. And oh my God, I gained 10,000 followers just from having Bailey Sarian or whomever on my show. And they can have really epic high value to share as well, but it also comes backed by their name and their brand. So Shay and Jody, what I would suggest for you is to find a way that you can come to shows as an expert. And I, I know that your show kind of has a dabbly vibe to it because you're, you know, chasing these rabbit holes. And it's not necessarily that you're like, oh, we're the boss of the Pacific Northwest. Like we have all of the answers. It's, it's you being curious. But in your curiosity, you have learned things. So to just look at some of your recent episodes, you've got Crater Lake Mysteries, um, The History of Starbucks, REI Odyssey, Tracing the Outdoor Giant's History. So you've got some really interesting things that not necessarily everyone knows about. So if you could hop on a coffee podcast, because I know that those exist, I'm starting to become something of a coffee snob. It's, it's just, it's, it's my era, I guess, <laughs> where I'm at. So, you know, if you go on a coffee podcast and talk about Seattle's coffee culture and Starbucks's coffee culture uh, and bikini baristas, because that's also apparently a thing, you know, so you could talk about how that relationship is still echoed X amount of decades at this point now in the Pacific Northwest. So you're not necessarily saying oh, I know everything, but you're saying, hey, I have information that I have gained that I'd love to share on your podcast that's about coffee. And also, hey, since we're in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, that's a huge coffee culture. And, you know, we can maybe be a good fit for your audience that way. And then hopefully any any host that's really worth their salt, in my opinion, is going to offer an enthusiastic way for you to plug yourself that they're going to be like, awesome. Thank you so much for this conversation about bikini baristas and coffee culture. Tell the people where they can find you. Awesome. Yeah, we're Rainy Day Rabbit Holes. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, whatever. So that is kind of the approach I would take with that. Or, you know, you could with REI and kind of their history, you don't have to be the president or CEO of REI, but you've done at least 55 minutes and 44 seconds worth of research on this conglomerate. And so you could maybe go on uh, an exploring or adventuring or backpacking or mountaineering podcast and be like, yeah, like, let's share this retail giant. And, and let's talk about that impact. And you know, why REI is maybe the choice you'd make, or maybe it's not. So you can kind of come on as an expert, even if you don't think of yourself as like, Dr. REI expert, <laughs> you know, PhD, you don't have to be super, super knowledgeable about it. But it's like I talk about in some of my other episodes where it's just about knowing more than the person that you're speaking to. So that's kind of the entry point that I would suggest with your pitch is, you know, find a coffee podcast and be like, hey, we're Shay and Jody, And we chase these rabbit holes. And one of the rabbit holes that we just chased was all about coffee culture. And we'd love to come on and have a chat with you. Find shows that have a similar vibe to you. You know, if, if they're really stodgy, they may not be the right fit. But if they're kind of, you know, interested in being curious and, and just learning and having a conversation with you, I think that that would be such a, an impactful way to make that connection. And, you know, you don't have to be like, and we only have, I don't know how many listeners you have. We only have X amount of listeners. Uh, you, you don't have to lead with that because the impact is the conversation. You're not promoting yourself as a connector. You're not saying, and we have 10,000 followers on Instagram who are super jazzed to engage with your show. You're saying, hey, what we have to offer is our information. So I hope that helps. And I really love your show. So thank you so much for writing in. And if you have a podcasting question that you would like answered on the show, you can email me at rue.sonivia at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram at Sonivia Studios. I've also got a Facebook group that I've been growing, which is one of the best ways to get some direct support from me. It's still really small, and I'm still kind of factoring how I want it to work. 
So you can find that link in the show notes or search podcasting up an octave on Facebook. Now you know what up an octave means. I'm still getting started over there. So come get in on the ground floor. And if it gets to a, a bigger point, I'll probably be less able to provide some direct support. So get in while you can to, to really have some more hands-on access. I will be back next week passing the mic to Megan and Max from the Mediaverse Unwrapped podcast. So go check them out. Get some listening under your belt. In the meantime, please share this episode with a friend who has been lamenting editing. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And while you're there, drop a rating or a review because just like your show, mine needs those to grow. The conversation keeps going and I share even more podcasting tips and tricks, including my setup that I <laughs> did in four minutes <laughs> to, to get this episode out over on Instagram at Sonivia Studios. So head over there. And thank you for helping me take podcasting up an octave.